My name's Patrick Reamer, but I will introduce ourselves in short order. How many of you out there are children's librarians? Cool. Keep your hands raised. How many of you were children's librarians and still bring an awesome love for serving families to the work you do? That's pretty much most of the room. So uh, that's, that's my kind of crowd. That's, that's who I want to talk to today. Thank you guys so much for coming. Um, we're going to talk about the idea box and kid-powered programming. How many of you stopped by the elf gathering last evening? Yeah, we had a few people come out. Um, we actually ran the idea box there, and I'm hoping uh, that we'll get to do some other live demos of the box later uh, this conference, maybe Sunday in the exhibitor hall. But you don't even know what the idea box is yet. So... Let's get to this. Um, I'm going to introduce ourselves. So my name is Patrick Reamer. Uh, I'm the Senior Community Library Manager in the Pleasant Hill Library. And we're all with the Contra Costa County Library System. I'm a Andrea Frailer. I'm um, the Community Library Manager of the Oakley Library. And I'm Ann Miller. I'm Youth Services Librarian at the Danville Library. Great. So uh, this project was really a county-wide project. And uh, we had many other people that helped make this possible. Um, but really, it's all about the kids. Kids are magical, right? Kids are amazing. They're full of just incredible, mind-blowing ideas um, that just challenge our preconceived notions about the world. Um, I feel like strongly that all of those ideas really can change our libraries. Um, and kids can be incredibly powerful beings, powerful agents of change in our libraries if we give them a platform and a way to speak their voice and turn those ideas into reality. Um, I feel like we really want to embrace this potential for power that kids have. Um, but let's be real, like, a lot of times, uh, though we may tell kids to use their words, we as adults don't always have um, the bandwidth to support really listening to what kids have to say and really taking those things seriously, no matter how crazy they are, right? No matter how wild um, and imaginative they are, um, it can be hard for us to embrace that and really uh, take those ideas seriously and act on those as adults. Um, so much of, I feel like, our time um, can be focused on protecting the safety and the health of kids and their sort of um, healthy development. Uh, and sometimes that comes at the expense of really listening to them and what they want to do, right? There's not a lot of spheres where kids can feel like they're in control. They're the ones who choose their experience and they define it. Um, so how can we change that up? How can we give kids a place where they're more powerful and they feel like their ideas matter, that adults will listen to them, right? And those things can become real in the world. Uh, we know for a fact there's research that shows, you know, the more um, that kids feel listened to, the more that they're able to imagine um, their ideas coming into reality and seeing that happen, the more powerful they'll be and the, the more civically engaged they'll be, right? These, these kids are going to grow up. Hopefully they'll grow up and vote, all right, and, and participate in their communities, maybe be librarians and give back to their communities in different ways. So how, how can we do that? How can we um, empower kids? Well, we came up with an idea to do that that we call the Idea Box. And Andrea is going to uh, give you a little taste of what it is with a snapshot of the Idea Box. So you should have a bookmark if you guys, um, if I put them out. If not, we'll get more at the end. But basically kids, kind of, this is the bookmark. I'm gonna, they bring their ideas to the library. They get this piece of paper. They write down their ideas. They put it in this magical ball. <laughs> and then they put it in the Rube Goldberg-like contraption, um, inspired contraption. And... Um, they put it in, and their ideas become magic. <laughs> so that's their ideas. And Anne's going to talk a little bit about the, the numbers, the stats for our project. So of our 26 libraries, um, five libraries got an idea box, um, one a library from each county supervisor district, and uh, ran at different times over the summer. And so we collected uh, 8,000 submissions uh, from children. Of those 8,000 submissions, over half were actionable ideas. The rest were scribbles, empty pieces of paper, a few swear words. <laughs> um, and we found dozens of themes coming through, and we've activated hundreds of those ideas so far. And we have still a treasure trove of ideas that we can tap into. And um, this uh, Patrick got a Pitch an Idea LSA, LSTA grant for $16,000. And so each of those five libraries got $2,500 to make those ideas happen. 
Yeah, so all made possible with an LSTA grant. Um, so let me just dial it back a little bit. So what was the, the original genesis of the idea box? Um, actually came from a much smaller grant, a $5,000 um, Eureka grant uh, when I was in the Leadership Institute. And, um, you know, you go through this week-long leadership development training and, and then they say, okay, well, you know, we're, you're going to have to, the culmination is a project. You're going to have to do something. Um, and, and you got $5,000. What are you going to do with it? And so I, yeah, I was a children's librarian at the time and I'm thinking, all right, like, how am I going to use $5,000 to really change things up and really excite kids and families and really um, do something special? And uh, I was working for a wonderful uh, woman named Heidi Dollimore, uh, and together we were just thinking, like, what would kids do? Like, what if you cut a blank check to a kid, and what would they do with that money? Um, and it was really, it was just a really um, kind of like a breakthrough for us. Like, yeah, it's not about, you know, what we think they could do. Um, I feel like so much of our time we try to do this community needs assessment and say, you know, what what's going to be best for kids, right? And we talk to their parents and we talk to, you know, other educators and community partners, all really, really valuable stakeholders in this process. Um, but we don't often get down and talk to kids and say, what would you do? Um, and so this was really an elaborate way to cut a blank check to kids and find out what they would do with the money. Um, so this was the original um, Rube, Bol Rube Goldberg contraption. Um, it had Ferris wheels and was very elaborate, and the balls would break all the time because they were just made out of a brittle plastic. Um, and, um, uh, but we had just an amazingly, overwhelmingly positive response uh, from kids and their caregivers. Um, and it really, uh, you know, talking about the evocative library, you know, something that we're, we're aiming for when you walk in the library and you're met with surprise and delight, um, that's really what we were seeing on the faces of these kids was like when they came in and they saw this thing. It's like, what? What is going on in my library? Um, and it was just so positive that I really wanted to figure out a way that we could um, expand this, uh, reaching other parts of the county um, and sharing that experience more broadly, um, and then doing some sort of design tweaks and refinements uh, to the original contraption. Um, you know, the first one I made with some support from some very savvy makers, um, including my dad, who has an awesome shop and is like a former aircraft mechanic and has a lathe. And it was like, there's all, I had all the resources available to do it. How many of you own a lathe? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, you're awesome. Um, so talk to her after the, uh, after the talk. No, um, I, I really wanted to, to make it accessible, right? So, um, you know, as we'll talk more, this, this program can be done without a crazy Rube Goldberg contraption. Um, there's really just a, a simple philosophy underlying it, but um, I wanted to figure out a way where we could really open this up and make it an open source platform, right? Um, so uh, we published all the instructions online, uh, and there's some videos um, as well, instructional videos that are coming. And um, it's a much more simple design. It's less expensive to make, and all the pieces you can pretty much buy at a hardware store. You can buy them online. The fanciest bit is a Lego Mindstorms brick. Um, and you don't even really need to do that. You can use microcontrollers, you could make a hand crank. Um, but the idea is that it's a hackable project. So anybody who wants to get crazy, including kids and teens in your libraries who might want to take on an ambitious maker project, um, will have the simple resources, a parts list, you know, places where they can buy things, and really try to assemble their own idea box. Um, and uh, and the, the pegboard back means that it's really reconfigurable, so you can reinvent it. Um, and it can be a project in itself that doesn't break your bank. You can save all the money to spend on the ideas instead. Um, and um, yeah, that uh, is, uh, is something that really even us timid makers who maybe are just getting our feet wet can do, because it really just requires you know, a simple hand saw and a screwdriver. Power, power drills is great to have, but you don't need a table saw or a lathe, right? Um, so anybody can, can make that contraption. Um, so um, with that, I'm just going to move on to the actual juice of the project, which was collecting ideas, celebrating ideas, and activating ideas. So we, each library did a little bit differently. Um, and Anne, I know your library, you. Um, and we tried to have it very open-ended. The, uh, the little slip of paper says, what is your idea? And so we really wanted them to come up with whatever is on their mind. Uh, some, so we tried to have no parameters, although some libraries did uh, experiment more with frameworks such as mine. Uh, we, I, I tended to introduce it to school groups or uh, we also had a piece of paper at the idea box that said, um, what would you do to improve the children's reading room or children's services? Um, and we were going for children of all ages and so uh, we had uh, kids 
uh, scribbling, uh, parents and caregivers talking to their child. What is your idea? Can you tell me about it? Uh, and acting as scribes and also helping snap those balls to in and um, getting them into the machine. Uh, children were so excited that uh, they'd say, oh, I just put in an idea. Can I put in another and another and another? And uh, they were so desperate to get their ideas in, partly because the machine is, itself is so very fun and fascinating that um, when the, the machine would be asleep, they'd be trying to figure out how they could push through the, um, the idea box's sleeping sign, <laughs> tossing it over the top, putting it in underneath the table into the bag, handing the, the ideas to staff at the desk. So. Um, I mean, it, it engaged everyone. I, I work, my library shares with a high school, and so the, the high school's open um, before we are. There are students there, and they would get so angry, not angry, but they would complain to the, the high school librarian that the idea box wasn't on, and they <laughs> were like, want it on. They were ready to put their ideas in. So, yeah, we'd come back, and they, they, yeah, they'd toss them over or what, but we'd have a ton of ideas. So It's interesting, too, just yeah, how the different ages interacted mm -hmm. with the box. Um, you know, from those kids who um, were pre-literate, you know, they're just learning to hold a pencil and just printing their name. Um, and, you know, that's where you get that discrepancy between idea submissions and actionable ideas. It's not because there were no good, you know, there, there were less good ideas. It was just simply these were kids who really wanted to participate. Um, and they were really driven to, to, you know, write their name down or write, um, write something, draw something, scribble something so that they could participate. So it was really cool to see that on the, um, on the younger end of things, much, much uh, younger kids than we had initially programmed the box for. Um, but also, yeah, to see the, the way um, it supported uh, parents and caregivers to step in and sort of scaffold that experience. Um, you know, being that scribe and just saying, you know, and, and staff too, you know, we get down to say, what do you want? What, what's your idea? And we would just transcribe it. Just you no know, questions asked. Okay, I'm going to put exactly what you say down there, and you get some amazing responses that way. Um, also, on the upper end, you know, like the high school and the, the teenagers, we have a lot of middle schoolers at Pleasant Hill, uh, where I'm at, and uh, it was really interesting that they understood that this was some version of a ballot box, and that if they put enough ideas and they got all their friends to put in the same idea, maybe maybe their idea would have a better chance of being, you know, transformed into something something tangible. So, uh, one example for us, we're in a very old building, and we're getting getting a new one um, in a few years, but uh, the submission of bigger, cleaner bathrooms in that exact same language over and over and over again from different kids. And um, we're like, yeah, no, we get it. And we, you know, we're, we're working on this. Um, but it was very interesting to see that it was like they had um, self-organized. And I'm like, now nah, that is an important skill, right? That's an important skill, no matter how you use the box. And it, uh, parents slow down. I think that's the thing. I mean, they'd come, you know, parents, we often see that they come in in a rush just to get their holds or I need this book on this. And it really got the parents to stop because it was really it, just seeing it. You, you stop. And so the parents would stop and they and, and engage. And so you got to see that connection. And they took the time to listen. And that's something, um, you know, can be easily forgotten as we rush around. So we're just going to show off a couple of the idea slips because you're probably wondering, well, what, what did they say? What, what are the ideas? So these ideas are just uh, techie, technology ideas, um, is to make flying cars, the blue one says, solar, oh. solar windmills, make kitties that are robotic, that do whatever you want, <laughs> that are the size of your hand by an eight-year-old, and a bridge across the ocean. My six-year-old, yeah, and they, so it was neat to see their ages too. I mean, that was really the exciting part. And then we had these are books because you know we still do books. Um, <laughs> more kids' books in Spanish. Um, age eighteen uh, was that eighteen? Oh, eight. Mm -hmm. We should have more cupcake diary diaries because they are the most. They. Are, I should have read it first. <laughs> <laughs> we all know they love the cupcake diaries. Yes. yes. There aren't as much on the shelf as I expected, mm, age yeah. 10. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> More wings of fire books, mm -hmm. and then just a bookshelf with lots and lots of books on it that um, doesn't look like it's been weeded very well. <laughs> but, um. <laughs> and, and with our submissions, we also had a place where our volunteers could write in what children drew. So, yeah. so we collected not only what they wrote, but what they drew. 
ideas. Here's a final, just a final slide that's got a variety on there too. Yeah. Um, the butterflies is the upper right hand corner. Uh, have a robot, um, unicorn, and something. Robot unicorns, right? Uh -huh. I think we can all agree yeah. that that would be uh, yeah. that would be useful. Lightning McQueen pictures on the walls. Mm -hmm. More story times. I want to ride a, a two wheeled bicycle. Mm -hmm. My idea is to be a famous actor. So uh, we also want to talk about celebrating ideas. So um, you know, once all those ideas pour in, um, we really sh sort of shift gears and try to work to show that those ideas matter, right? That every idea is important. It's not a contest. Um, you know, although we only have a certain amount of money to activate the ideas, we really wanted to show that every idea was important. Uh, part of that actually was just with the idea box itself, right? The fact that it's such an elaborate journey to go from your mind in a, in a ball through a maze and a castle and tubes and all that um, is is just showing just sort of like how important each idea is, right? It's so precious that we want to take it on this this, this magical journey. Um, and uh, you want to talk about the yeah article? yeah and that well yeah and that one picture of that kid screaming mm -hmm. Isaac he, he's he let it was fantastic because every time he'd do it he'd come back every Wednesday for story time mm -hmm. and he'd have a new idea and he'd want to put it in so the whole just and the home, the mom would talk how they were talking about his ideas, so they would come back that next week. So that whole celebration, that whole week, that conversation that they w were engaging in is, was amazing. And then you'd hear him scream when they did it the whole time. But, um, you know, um, so, and what did it do? So celebrating the ideas, it actually brought a lot of um, attention to the community. Um, I'm in a community where I'm trying to get, you know, people to understand we're just not books. Um, and so um, it really, there was a lovely article done um, in the newspaper and it brought attention to the, the, the whole idea box and what we're doing. And you know, I have a council member who you know, I've been working on for a few years and he's starting to like the library a little bit. And um, you know, he asked me at an event, another event, he came up to me and said, how's the library? What, what, what are you doing with those ideas? So he heard that message loud and clear. So it's really a way to get the whole community engaged, um, much beyond just the kids and their ideas, which we want to celebrate and we'll continue to talk about that. But it really is a powerful tool for the community and the stakeholders to see what we're doing and to be engaged with the library. And, and then just have them up too. I mean, the, just have them up, that wall was just to see them. And we also have um, each of the five libraries has an online um, uh, site uh, on our website uh, where we posted some ideas online. We, uh, there were so many submissions that we, most of the libraries put together word clouds. Of, and you can see the themes coming through here, such as uh, this is from the Pittsburgh Library. And actually, in the, the previous iteration of it, we even tried um, posting all of the ideas to uh, a, like a free platform for ranking. Um, we went away from that this year because, again, we really wanted to celebrate it and keep it entirely positive. So although it helps staff sort through and sort of prioritize um, themes of ideas that seem especially popular, um, we actually stepped away from that just because we, we didn't want it to turn into a contest, right? Um, it was a cool way to visualize it, but having a thumbs down is not cool. Like, that's not the way we want to go. In the background there, you can just see the bundles and bundles of ideas that come in um, that, uh, yeah, just kind of proliferate our office spaces now. <laughs> but they're really fun, you know, like you empty out that net at the end of the day um, with all the ideas that have come in and you can read through them. And, you know, we, it's, the celebration starts in the back, you know, with your staff who get to read through those and be like, oh, no, check out this one. This one's so crazy. Um, and it really just pumps the staff and reminds us, you know, how much we love working with kids. It's a great project to get volunteers engaged in, too. They, I mean, they loved it. And it, actually, our volunteer um, pool got a little bit stronger and they became a little more committed through this process. Cool. So we're going to talk about uh, activating the ideas next, which is like what we actually did, right? Taking all of those ideas and turning them into real stuff. So at the Danville Library, we put our money and a mat matching grant through our endowment um, into the facilities. So uh, here you see in the background uh, a very plain wall. At the far end of that room is the children's reading area. And so we took themes of 
robots, dragons, dinosaurs, and unicorns. How, how, what are we going to do with those? They also wanted color and rainbows and painting on the walls. So we took those four uh, themes and put them up on the walls, thanks to our graphic artist. Uh, uh, and those are decals. And you also see the castle. And the castle was a theme that came through part largely, probably, because the idea box itself had a Lego castle. So Legos and castles were an object of fascination. Um, and the bulletin boards now ha are just covered with uh, idea box submissions, and those are just some of them. Uh, and uh, next one. So uh, an other themes that came through, people wanted stuffed animals, toys, playground, comfy seating, uh, coloring. And we took those ideas and made them into a curiosity corner. So we dedicated a corner of the children's reading area where we'll have constantly passive programs and coloring sheets and activities that they can do at any time. And we also got this lovely caterpillar set. Uh, we, we took the idea of puppet shows and stuffed animals and got folk manis uh, hand puppets. You, you see Legos is a recurring theme. And so uh, then the idea of rainbows and colors, we didn't put rainbows on the walls, but we have them everywhere else. So we have these uh, colorful cushions uh, on our new magnetic end panel, we have gears and magnetic letters and numbers, so color throughout. So the reading, children's reading area has become much more engaging and entertaining and much more of a, a destination for children. Now at the Pittsburgh Library, they went more toward programming and they dedicated August as their idea box month. and. Uh, they had two slime workshops, because slime was very exciting. Uh, they also wanted magic. And not only did they have three magic shows, but they also uh, worked to make magic and teach children magic. So they had three magic workshops, so children could make their own magic. And uh, they also had Lego programs, and they discovered how, how exciting those were, and so they are, they're going to add uh, regular Lego building programs into their schedule as well. And then Oakley and um, El Cerrito, um, we kind of did the same kind of thing where, you know, we can't have story time every day. We'd love it, but, you know, we did things like puppets, and so you could have story time every day, and that, that's really part of it. So now, you know, the kids, that idea of having the puppets in the area, they are making their own stories, so they are having story time in the library every day. Um, and so we, we both took a, a similar approach. You know, there's puzzles and things, but um, really to make that happen. And then we, um, you know, robot competitions every Saturday. Well, how are we going to do that? We, we, we can't. Um, so, um, but, you know, we have an idea. We do have a, a Mindstorm little program, and we're actually working with those volunteers to recruit to maybe on Saturdays we did by, by um, Simple Empowered Machines by Lego. And so we're working with those volunteers right now. That's something that they can work in, and, and we can put out and, and kind of watch and observe and not really be that involved in, and, and everybody can work together. So maybe we will. You know, a year from now, we might have robot competitions on Saturdays. Who knows? I mean, I, I think we will. So, um, yeah. And then um, make the library bigger. And, um, well, um, we want a bigger library. I think, you know, um, um, I'm in a shared space, so we need a bigger library. Um, but, um, you know, it is getting the community engaged and starting those conversations and the fact that the city council member asked me about those ideas. I mean, I think this is the way to possibly get a bigger library. And, Patrick, you can speak to that a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, we were, we were talking earlier today just about, you know, I am in that situation of like we wanted a new library and we are getting one. And I feel like uh, those conversations start... Uh, when you face up to the fact that your community is demanding it, like, and it's written in, you know, on, on this piece of paper, right? These are kids who recognize um, that um, we could have something really, really, really special. Um, and it's really, really hard, I think, for um, a community to ignore that when you've set up a platform to really amplify that message of like all these kids and families 
you know, we, we can do this for them. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm fortunate to be, uh, you know, five years ahead from doing our initial idea box, and, and you know, we are, we are building a new library, and I really think it's connected a lot to um, the idea box and the way that it's transformed programming. So we kind of got there sort of through our idea box. Um, and I, I know, Andrea, you guys are going to get yours. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah. We got one more slide here just of, of the robots and the Legos. Um, Legos just hugely, hugely popular. Um, and again, that might be due to the fact that there's a lot of Lego components uh, in the idea box. Uh, something that I, I've been thoughtful about, just um, you know, not wanting to sway too much those ideas. Um, you know, that's the power of having a reconfigurable idea box is you could switch things out and change it up and see um, if you can, uh, you know, if, if that really does impact the kinds of submissions that you see. Um, uh, at Pleasant Hill, we had an additional mandate since we since we are looking to open a building in 2021. We wanted to use the idea box at Pleasant Hill to inform some of the decisions, the design decisions uh, that were going into this new building, uh, and um, and they have. You know, we've we've shared all of our idea submissions uh, with our architects, who are putting together a really wonderful, family-friendly, kid-empowering design, um, and then also you know just a lot of. Um, more sort of explicit things that come through around, you know, wanting cushy chairs and cool things to sit and read on. Um, and so we created a sitting zoo at uh, the Pleasant Hill Library, which is this uh, a sort of menagerie of different furnishings uh, that you can ride on and rock on and, you know, sitting in a clamshell or, you know, um, hanging out on a log um, or just rolling it around and making a giant mess, which is what they love, love, love to do. Um, so we definitely have a better sense of what we want to put and how we want to activate the spaces in the new library because of the idea box and what kids have said. Uh, we also brought in the magnetic wall, which is hugely popular. Again, might be connected a little bit to the idea box itself. They, you know, some of them said, oh, I want, I want to make my own box. Um, and this is a great place for a five-year-old to start um, that process, right, with a ball wall like that. Um, so what I want to... Um, talk about as sort of like capping this part of activating the ideas. I think a lot of you may look at these things and say, well, these, these are things that we're already doing. Like, we would, do, we would do that anyway, right? We want to bring toys and we want to bring play into our libraries. Like, we do slime at our library and have magic shows all the time. It might seem actually like not that revolutionary, the, resu the results, like the things that we're doing to activate the ideas. But I do really want to stress that it's a really different approach. Um, we're not just using these ideas to justify what we're doing. Um, we're really trying to tie every dollar that we spend, every hour that we spend on something that has been basically a mandate from kids. And so we can connect those things both in our promotion when we roll, when we roll out a program, we can say it's an idea, uh, an idea box powered um, event um, and we can put that onto our flyers. Um, and it's also this sort of a twist in our thinking too where um, it's not just about delivering and giving someone a prize saying, oh, you want this? Okay, here you get it, right? Um, it's about making decisions that are going to transform our whole environments, the way the Curiosity Corner and the sort of explosion of play. Um, these things are reconfiguring re and reimagining the spaces in a way that's going to help uh, support kids and generate even more ideas. So it carries on. Uh, the uh, submissions like this, you know, I, go you plant a garden, plant more trees. Well, we didn't just plant some trees and say, okay, done. You know, we crossed that off. Um, we do, uh, we partner with a local uh, gardener, Ruth Bancroft Garden, and do um, these tiny terrariums uh, as a maker event. And so kids can plant their own garden, right? It's something that they can take home and feel empowered. Hey, I can do this, right? I don't need somebody to plant a tree for me. I can do this. Um, and that's a, that's a real, like, big twist on it. Um, you know, we're not building a, a roller coaster for them. We're giving them a wall where they can make their own roller coaster, right? Um, so I do want to talk about challenges and failures. Um, because it's not all sunny. There's always wrinkles to anything that's as complicated as this, um, not least of all with the contraption itself. Do you guys want to speak to some of the, uh, the, the fiascos? <laughs> so here you see that the castle fell. The, um, my castle was very strong, lost the tower a couple of times. I had more of a problem with that rainbow belt. It occasionally would fall off, and I thought someone had pulled it. But actually, the tinker toys at the top were a little loose or something, so, so occasionally that would fall. And um, then uh, if, if I wasn't around watching and a ball fell off this arm and didn't make the slot to make the belt, then we could get a huge um, traffic jam and I'd come back a half an hour later to find 20 to 30 balls everywhere throughout the thing stuck. 
So, um, so we often had to put it, um, have it go to sleep so that um, to give me a chance to clean it out, collect the balls, get the balls back in, get more sheets out. Uh, so it was a challenge. Um, in the future, it'd be good to not have just one person running the whole thing, especially for several months, which uh, happened at the Danville Library. If it were to be just a couple of people, you might want to have a much shorter and focused time. It was working extremely well when I had second grade classes coming, and they just loved it, and we would uh, collect about a hundred um, ideas within an hour or so. Uh, but you do need to have volunteer help, teen advisory board members, volunteers, uh, STEM enthusiasts come help you out. Uh, it did work out extremely well having it during the summer. We had teen, uh, teen volunteers for summer reading. So the inputting of the ideas was very easy and smooth because that could become a challenge if you're trying to, uh, all of a sudden you have 300 ideas you need and what do you do with them, so. Yeah, and, and I had a little more staff engagement than just, I don't know how Anja did it just by herself, but um, we ran ours all the time, so the motors would run out, and so we would, you know, we needed to replace the motors a few times, and, you know, you'd have um, somebody who really didn't know how to do it come in and, 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 and fix it, but then next thing you know, the castle fell down, and um, I will say with the instructions online, you can download how to rebuild the castle. I'm not a Lego person. I'm, <laughs> I'm like probably the least maker. Not, I'm not the least maker. But, you know, I was able to um, get the directions and I was able to repair it on my own. So it is, it is something we can all do, even if that, you know, Legos scare me. But, I mean, that's, I probably shouldn't admit that. No, but. that's awesome. I, um, <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, growth mindset, man. Yeah. You, you, you put it back together. I put it back together. And, and the other thing I would say, watch out, like, when you're doing it, when you're fixing it, it is you, you can get kids involved and they can get more. I mean, that, and that was really exciting for me to see. We took down the plexiglass. You'd have to watch. So you, you definitely have to watch when you're taking down the plexiglass because then the kids want to start, like, touching it and poking <laughs> it. So, um but it, it is getting them involved, and it is like you're talking, okay, well, why, why are you doing this? The, light, the light's not going off, mm -hmm. and then you, you know, show them, and they're like, oh, that's how it did it. So, yeah. I mean, while even the failures, like the, the light isn't going off anymore, and then when you take it down and you're working with the kids, you can have those conversations and, you know, and get them engaged. And, yeah, yeah, I definitely think there's opportunities um, to grow some staff skills around, mm -hmm. um, you know, being a maker, right? Modeling not just literacy and learning, but, you know, um, making things with our hands and also yeah like it, yeah, involving those kids I, I think there's a huge opportunity to to actually make um, the idea box a project <clears throat> for your teens or, or adult maker community so uh, and then just, perhaps yeah. one other another challenge is to actually um, embrace some of those wild yes. seemingly impossible ideas such as Andrea's one about oh Disney. yeah, Disneyland. Well, and, and actually, and that's why. I mean, you get to keep talking about this, and you know, we had one an idea. A mom, uh, some, well, I don't know. I assumed it was a mom because it had a woman. I don't know, but somebody put, I, I want to take my child to Disneyland. I can't afford it, and put their phone number on it, and it was like, oh, but you know, we could get Discover and Go passes to Disneyland, maybe, and make that a possibility. Rich oh, Paul, there, Mr. Discover yeah, and Go. There you go. You, you, you on that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, one day. One day. Yeah, no, but, hey, you know, we, it is a possibility. Yeah. I mean, and it, it, it is, and it's really, I mean, you know, it's gotten everybody on my team. We're all thinking a little more creatively because we, well, we'll but we have those fish, we have those initial purchases, but now we are really thinking about programming differently and what we're going to do and how we're going to make those ideas come alive. And um, everybody's really excited now, and um, so it's exciting. Yeah, so let's um, oh. let's talk a little bit about the future yeah. um, and where we're going with the idea box. Um, obviously, the activation continues. Uh, rolling out five contraptions all around the county um, meant that it was sort of staggered. So people are in different phases of um, wrapping up, um, you know, the spending of the, of the grant money and how those things have turned into programs. Some of those things are ongoing programs. Um, 
And, uh, and you know, now that we have this massive database of ideas that actually continues to grow, and we can um, you know, filter that and sort that in ways to really understand you know, what kids are, are looking at. What are the big themes that are coming in? What do they really care about? Um, and that's just a huge, um, a huge data set that's uh, just wonderful and informing uh, how we do our jobs. Um, of course, a countywide tour, so we've got these boxes and we're sharing them all around. We've got 26 libraries in Contra Costa County, so uh, we're looking forward to more um, idea box um, experiences all around uh, the county. Uh, and then just fostering a kid powered approach beyond libraries. So, you know, thinking about our partners in schools. Um, you know, again, posting these instructions and getting other folks in the community to step up and say, hey, like, maybe I want to do this. Maybe I want to do it um, uh, in another venue. Um, and, you know, like Andrea was saying with, you know, City is, a, you know, trying to draw their attention to uh, honor and celebrate all the ideas that are coming from kids. So everybody can be a part of this magic. Uh, of course, our evolving roles, I think uh, we also spoke to that as, you know, there's a change in us that's required um, to take this approach. Um, it's, it's a, it takes a lot of energy to say, you know what, I'm not going to just do the thing that's easy that I know how to do. I'm going to try and do the crazy one that's like, you know, hard to do. Like you can, you can pull out, uh, you know, and say, oh, here's a puppet show. We'll just hire a puppet show because they, they told us to do that. But it's the ones that are really hard where you're like stumped. You're like, how are we going to do this? Like, how can I make this into a thing? Um, those can be the most wonderful because you are realizing unlocking whole sort of echelons of potential that you didn't realize you and your team could do together. Um, and the way really small ideas can snowball. So um, to go back five years to the first IdeaBox prototype, um, we rolled out um, an event called the Night of a Thousand Inventions that just came from simple ideas like this. You know, I want to make a cooking robot, or I want a launch chair that launches people, you know, to a cool room with books, or, you know, a trampoline bed. Um, and we're like, wow, how do we, like, I don't think we can put a trampoline bed in our library. That would be awesome. Um, but um, yeah, that, that, that could pose some, some challenges. Um, but the fact was they're telling us that they want to make these things, not just like, I want to go buy it at a store, right? They, they want to be able to create them themselves. And so that's why we took that approach of A Night of a Thousand Inventions, where, yeah, we brought in some really cool tech and we brought in robots, but actually the majority of the event was them taking cardboard and tape and, and prototyping something crazy, um, you know, time machines and all this kind of stuff that they can, you know, flying cars, and, and they can make those demos out of cardboard um, and tell some amazing stories around them as well. Um, that one event has evolved over the last five years. It outgrew our library. It's now a citywide event um, with uh, lots more funding that comes in from our other community partners, including our local rec and park. It's brought our agencies closer together, which is a, this is an added benefit. Um, and we had about 2,000 people at our uh, last uh, t uh, Tinkers and Thinkers Innovation Fair, which is a rebranding of the um, Night of a Thousand Inventions. So yeah, it's amazing how these small, small uh, seeds grow into oaks. And then um, just want to say briefly here as we wrap it up before Q&A, um, you know, what, what the result is. So you've heard a lot of anecdotal evidence, how excited we are about it. But what is the real change in behavior that we're seeing when we do an Idea Rocks program? Well, we did um, surveys uh, pre and post um, of parents and caregivers. Um, you know, this is about the kids, but it's also about creating a, a place where they feel empowered in and out of the library. And that means really engaging all the other adults in their lives. Um, and um, we're very fortunate we live in a community where um, the parents uh, said early on that they, that they value their children's imaginations. But we saw a marked increase um, after the program when they saw all of the amazing things that their kids were putting into the machine. So we saw an, a, a jump in the way um, they acknowledged their child was very or exceptionally creative on that end. Um, an increase in uh, the statement that you know, they were full of ideas that he or she shares with me, right? That they were sharing and vocalizing those ideas is really, really important. Um, and then, you know, 57 percent more respondents um, said that their child was more likely or much more likely to express and act on their ideas, uh, which is really, really the whole point. Um, like I said, children are magic, and I think the idea box, um, you know, is a way to sort of see and taste that magic. So if you think that the taste of magic ice cream is something you want to try, um, I urge you to check out the idea box website um, and uh, definitely get in touch with any of us. We'd love to tell you more stories and inspire you um, to do something similar at your library. So thank you.